We're back. One more technique of the month. This one is a very effective street fighting technique of the month for when somebody is inside your guard and is very aggressively driving their weight forward trying to crush you. And this is very common with larger attackers. You don't lay down to these with your feet this way. The person is in your guard and while you bring your arms over to block the punches, rather than sitting, trying to pull away, break free, in which case you bring your knees in and try to block and protect, this person thinks they're going to crush you. So what they'll do is they get up, they post one leg and they drive and they smash and they punch whatever they want to do from here. Most important thing, good head control, good arm positioning to make sure you don't get hit. Now, from right here, because I'm posted on one leg, I'm creating the opportunity for Hidon to execute what we call the elevator hook sweep from the guard. So what he needs to do is uncross his legs and while pivoting his weight on my thigh right here, he's going to shoot his hips out to the side, the side of the pivoting leg or the side of my posted leg, I'm sorry. Once he scoots his hips, his hook goes around the outside and under my, uh, the bend of my knee, right below my hamstring. As soon as the hook gets in, he brings the hand that's around my neck and he shoots it under my, um, under my arm right here to establish a very deep underhook. Now with the arm underhooked and the hook inserted in my thigh or my knee right here, it's very easy to lift straight up with these two over towards his head and sweep and fall right into the mouth position. So. The best part about this technique here is the more aggressive the opponent becomes or drives their weight forward, the easier it is to sweep them, take advantage of the opportunity and end up in the full mount position. So once again, from stage one of the punch block series is what we call it. Stage one being when you have the head and arm pinched and wrapped right here, protecting from the punches. Check it out, in slow motion, as I post my leg and prepare to strike, he don't can recognize and feel my hips right now. Let go for a sec. This is how my body feels and how it is by itself. I'm here and I'm up. One leg posted, other knee on the ground. And my body driving forward, ready to strike effectively right here. Ready to punch, ground and pound, whatever you want to call it. So when he don't feel this type of body positioning, he's ready to hook, lift, and sweep to the mount position. So, as I come around, one more time. As my leg comes up, he recognizes the opportunity. He uncrosses his legs. And while pushing down on this, this leg, he scoots his hips out as far as he can. As soon as his hips get out, he brings his toes around the outside, hooking under the bend of my knee, and then he inserts the underhook, immediately after inserting the hook. Now notice what he's doing with this arm over here. He's making sure that my arm is not way out, he's pinching it beforehand, so there's no way I can put my hand out. And with his leg down there, rotate so you can see the leg there please. With his leg, he's hooking right at the bend of my knee, right near my hamstring there as well, on the outside, so I can't put my leg out for base. As he lifts up with the hooking arm and the hooking leg, I can't pose and easily he transfers over and achieves the mount position. One more time. So once again, the best opportunity or the opportunity for this is when the person in your guard is driving all their weight with a posted leg, one posted leg. If they have both legs sprawled up evenly, it's possible, it's just more difficult because they're going to have more base to begin with. When they begin, if they're here, both legs sprawled up very wide. When he don't hips out and inserts the hook, go ahead. Hip out, insert the hook. When he starts to throw me now, as he lifts, my foot over here is going to make it things difficult. It's possible that he don't traps my leg low and lifts so high that it still works. But just be aware of the fact that if it doesn't work, it's because the initial setup or their body positioning wasn't entirely uh, perfect for the sweep to take place. So. You're looking for the opportunity, one leg up, other knee down. And if that's there, you're in business. An alternate hand position, rather than being here where he don't has the arm over my arm, sometimes the opponent sneaks through, wraps your neck, and is trying to strike from here. In that situation, they have the headlock right here. What you want to do is keep the neck hug. He don't puts his hand behind his head right there, trapping my arm around his neck. So confirming my grip here. Same exact hip positioning, he scoots out, he hooks in the front of my knee, and then he inserts the underhook as well, as soon as his hook goes in. Now watch what happens on this side over here. As he stretches, let's rotate slightly, watch how he's going to stretch my arm upwards and kind of kick my leg down as he lifts the hook slowly. Go back. Watch my elbow come off the ground. Watch this elbow, posting elbow, come off the ground as he stretches the side of his body. And then the hook lifts, it's the same exact thing. So. Whether you have a standard stage one position or whether they're hugging the neck in a, in a headlock, ground and pound situation, same technique, same principles. Hip, insert the hook, 
shoot the underhook in and lift. One of the most common mistakes is during the lifting phase, when you're trying to make the sweep happen, people, rather than lifting the person forward, they try to lift straight up. And that puts too much, uh, puts too much work load on your quad, on your thigh, rather than incorporating the whole body as you do when you're lifting upward. So make sure that as you trap everything and you prepare, you insert the hook and the underhook goes in, when you're ready to go, shoot it up over 11 o'clock rather than 9 o'clock when you're sweeping. Very effective. Once again, this is, this is a very real street fight technique. Um, you might not encounter this situation against a skilled grappler because they won't ever commit their body weight that way. Now, because you might not use it against a grappler, doesn't mean you won't need it for survival. So practice it, get good at it, and uh, as always, keep it real.